Hi, my name is Hannah Taylor Johnson. I'm coming to you from Ghana land in Adelaide and I'm here to introduce you to my book Rhymes with Hyenas, which I'm calling an, an epistolary verse novel hybrid thing because uh, if I zip through it, you can see that there are texts of prose emails and texts of uh, poems and um, and it's it's something different. Uh, it began because I wanted to go to a D.H. Lawrence conference years ago so I thought I'll write letters uh, from the Brangwen sisters to each other, Ursula and Gudrun, and they'll send each other poems. And it would be a, a way for me to um, give female voice and female tra trajectory to the women in Women in Love who are Basically, their narrative is um, is uh, is informed by two male male characters. Uh, after the conference, this concept sprang uh, full on um, with other women who were written by male characters, and eventually, I had a group of women who all lived on Ghana land and decided to start a poetry group together and they've crossed timelines and they've crossed um, oceans and here they are rhymes with hyenas so I'll introduce you to them one by one as I read a little bit from them uh, we'll begin with Ursula who uh, got the group going dear friends I hope you don't find me too forward for contacting all of you at once especially as some of you don't know each other but I have an idea, perhaps an outlandish one, considering our varying origins and dispositions. But don't they seem to be the ideas which work so often? Rupert and I rent a shack in Moonta Bay. Lack of noise seems to be what we need, to be outside in the day and inside at night. He is sick, chronically, and I will do whatever I can for him. My husband is the kind of person who wishes to be perceived as tragic, so perhaps this new, slow devastation suits him. It does not, however, suit me. I try to be patient and attentive, and I do think I'm managing the caring role well. I do think I'm able to be strong and loving partner, but I tend to pity myself on occasion and must find a way through it. I feel it would be good for me to have women in my life right now, so I've attached a poem, and this, you see, is my idea, that we might meet once in a while and share our poetry and woes and celebrate life's small splendors. We are all, after all, literary beasts. Yours, Ursula. Now, Ursula is sometimes um, taken down for uh, inserting lines from her, her book into her poems, uh, D.H. Lawrence's lines. The rest of the women don't feel like they're defined by that book, but Ursula is adamant that um, it's, it's about Rupert for her. She does love him. Um, so she's a little bit different than the rest of the women. Uh, this this has allowed me to to really sort of dig into um, metafiction, um, intertextuality, and, and those sorts of fun things. So I'll read a poem by Ursula. She uh, she can't have a baby right now. She would love to. So she does write a, a lot about infertility, and she writes about her husband, and she writes about illness, and they live by the water. So she writes about the sea. This is called Sea Dragons. How deep this thirst. I swallowed the ocean, tasting of you, and like the velvety underbelly of a stingray brushing my bare legs kicking in a sluggish rhythm, you took me by surprise, made me reflect on chance and living as if I could die. You were the water and the sky, all or nothing, always all. I can't explain how love grows except for this. Lately, when I swallow the ocean, tasting of you, Coral reefs cover my eyes. Sea dragons take harbor in my body. I give each one a name. So now I'll introduce you to Katharina Minola, who is from Shakespeare's Taming of the Shrew, which is supposed to be a comedy, but it's a really horrible um, tragedy, <laughs> really. Um, Katharina uh, is, is the most traumatized, I, I think, and she writes these really jaggedy poems like that. This is called Mother. If my father was king, then thistles, then knuckles, then rings and prowess, then beneath she lay in velvet robes, between her legs a rose. And Dolores writes, sends her a poem back. Uh, Dolores is um, otherwise known as Lolita from Nabokov's Lolita, but she would never ever consider call, answering to that name, just as um, Katharina would never answer to Kate. 
My vagina is not a hole. My vagina is not a hole, empty with an aim to becoming full. It doesn't need your impeding while trying to rest. It's not a cave with dripping and cool connotations. It is not damp. It doesn't echo. Listen, it doesn't even know your name. My vagina breathes its own inward, outward rhythm, so subtle and secret I sometimes forget it's there, and when I remember, it comes flooding back. More yes than what. More because than how. Katharina, you're shitting me. We both wrote about vaginas. There's this thing called spoken slurred at the coffee pot off Rundle Mall every month. It's a cool gig, cheap drinks and foul words. At the last one, Karen Treadray read a poem about her vagina and dared everyone to bring one next time. It's Thursday, just in time to get the group's feedback and make a few small edits. Come with me and we'll read ours. I wonder if your structure would transfer from page to stage. But then if spoken word is performance and interpretation, shouldn't everything transfer from page to stage? Page to stage? Whatever. I'm attaching a little poem just for you that's sort of another vagina poem, vibing on the theme. X, Dolores. I've never performed anything but gender and sex, though I'm often emboldened by cheap drinks. All the best, Katharina. So I really did enjoy, uh, you know, writing this sort of love letter to Adelaide and its poets and its places and its venues that support spoken word and that sort of thing. But I did get to move beyond Adelaide and, and look at other poets from other other um, parts of Australia, female poets. And that was a joy to be able to mention poets I admire. Um, okay, this is uh, a, a little uh, um, email from Caddy, who's from William Faulkner's The Sound and the Fury. And she's writing to Ursula after Ursula has said, look, I'm unsure about some of the things Lilith said, and by the way, I'm sorry she made fun of your baby's head. Caddy writes, Hi, Ursula. It's sometimes embarrassing how organized I am. I just thank goodness I can laugh at myself. I'm glad you brought up Lilith. Must say, I was a titty bit intimidated. I hate that we're talking behind her back, or typing, I suppose. I was trying to work out how to leave Bruno at home next time, but who would look after those fingers and that head? Sean Gee is home on Sundays, but he says it's too difficult to have both children with him alone, especially as he can't get Bruno to take a bottle. I find juggling the domestics so hard, so thank you for your email. And Ursula, I stand by my words. I love rhymes and the indentations. Here's me sending, me, sending a brava kiss your way. Those are roses at your feet. I don't do much with indentations, but I should because they're fun to read. And you placed us at a beach, for goodness sake. We should at least be allowed some fun. Smiling face emoji. Go with your gut. That womanly gut where fire sometimes pauses to reflect on itself. We are all still thinking about the fire, aren't we? Have they stopped yet? Are they coming back? Will next year be worse? And yes, she did rhyme, of course. What lasts most for me when I think about Lilith at the meeting is not her obvious annoyance with Bruno, because he was demanding my attention a lot, and that really was annoying, but the story she told us of the women in the Amazon breastfeeding monkeys, and also the one about the 22 swilly-out women throwing their children from crags before they jumped, one by one singing, Death Above Slavery, Set Our Bodies Free. Have a lovely Tuesday in this beautiful sun. Caddy. So Caddy is really caught up in the domestic side of things and I enjoyed indulging in her because for many years I was caught up in babies and babies and babies and the domestic side of things and writing about it and I just had a feeling that the poetry community sort of got sick of this and I became known for this and it was a lesser sort of thing to write about. Um, so, you know, Caddy was important to me to have in, in her, her storyline was really important to me. Um, and I guess this is sort of, uh, would be considered her vagina poem, though it's, <laughs> it's quite different than the others. Instructions for my husband. I feel it here, above my stomach, between the butterfly wings of my ribcage and sensual like the universe, a longing for what's born of womb, for broken children and sleeping children and children who grow and don't. It's as if there's no containment in this monthly bleed, no rules for patience, no rationale. Hormones, you think, and stay clear of my sex while I say to you, stop telling me a glass half empty is a glass half full. Just know that I am thirsty. 
Okay, I'm now going to read to you, introduce you to uh, Lilith, who is um, a first woman of um, Hebrew mythology. Now, my Lilith uh, was married to Eve, and Eve has died recently. So my Lilith is uh, really dealing with a lot of grief. And she writes sonnet secret poems, mostly about Eve and about um, their life together and its passing. Uh, she's also been newly diagnosed with MS, so she sometimes uh, talks about her illness and, um, and coming to terms with it in her emails with the other women. Now, I'll just introduce you to, uh, to Lilith at first through an email to Ursula. What a wonderful launch last night of this anthology. You should be very pleased with yourself having such a stunning poem in there. Michelle Call's opening one struck me deeply. She's very careful with words, and her use of commas is enviable. Tell me what you think when you get around to reading slash responding. And very happy to see our own Louise Nicholas and Natalie Harkin in the mix. Adelaide poets do know how to make a splash on occasion. I had far too much fun last night with this new cackle of friends, and suddenly there we were at the Austral, danger of one of my colleagues' university days. Oh, yes. Oh, apologies if that stopped. My battery just went low. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, yes, I'd been warned, and still I went. I should have entered those doors wearing a red T-shirt that read, If you see me smoking a cigarette, tell me it's time to go home. I've been making up T-shirt slogans in my head ever since Mel showed up at our meeting wearing, You should see my library. I'm crawling into bed to spend this rainy Saturday reading the rest of the anthology, picking up where I left off with Libby Hart. I like her very much. Even I had read her first book together, Cuddled in Bed. A beautiful memory, now ingrained on every page of that book. Must reread it someday. Or perhaps not. X. Lilith. So an example of uh, Lilith's um, sonnet sequences. Here's Here's part one of a five-part sequence that's called Eve's Second Sin. Part one, what you ask. You ask, can, be the, can there be forgiveness? Dare I care in this desert where dust crusts the cracks in my eyes and wind-blown earth picks pox in my skin, browned by days and years? And dare I care if forgiveness comes after years of exile without a trial, after Adam's denial and God's last word? Dare I hope for heaven someday? Perhaps I'll just keep on my way. Eve, all these years, and still you ask among this dirt? I spit at the roots of the native pine so that it may thrive. The sun's in my eyes. It feels very strange to end that there. <laughs> There's five more parts to go, four more parts. Okay, uh, I'll introduce you to uh, my last woman, woman, who is Mel Isaacs, and she's from, well, I'll just introduce you to her through her biography, which is um, a modern-day biography, but it situates each woman in there literary history. Mel Isaacs is a South African actor, dancer, and playwright who has traveled the world with her stage production since 2017. She hopes the poems she wrote with Rhymes with Hyenas are reason enough to now add poet to her list of titles. Mel would like to stop writing about David Laurie, her professor slash abuser in J.M. Coetzee's Disgrace, but the tiny poems keep coming. Perhaps she'll adapt them into a play one day. Mel writes little, little poems, Here's an example of one. The street between two streets. It was leaving the pub and one of us singing, how the rest of us joined in. It was the moon, the moon and a gum tree. Thank you for listening to my reading of Rhymes with Hyenas and here's to sisterhood. <laughs>